Hey YouTube, hey Instagram, welcome back to another Solar Punk Farmer vlog. And today we are going to begin turning over the resilience garden for fall. So let's have a real quick look around the garden. Uh, this bed right here, which I'm calling bed number one, is going to be the one that is getting turned over. As you can see, the cover crops have gotten absolutely massive. They are senescing and honestly, they're due. It's, it's time to pull them out. The aquaponic system looks pretty good. Been getting some zucchini and some summer squash going. Tomatoes are huge, they're still popping off. Uh, got plenty of greens in the towers as well as the strawberries. The strawberries have kind of been laying low since it's been really hot and the chard is looking absolutely fantastic. Sugarcane is growing up quite nicely, as you can see, as are the sweet potatoes. They are beginning to spread out underneath the lemon tree. It looks like they are making a fantastic companion for the lemon tree which is about to start producing lemons, as we can see right here. Super stoked for that. Sunchokes are still looking great after I cut them back. I expect them to continue going for maybe another two months, possibly three months. All the perennials are establishing nicely, looking fantastic, especially the Mexican sunflower. Feeling really stoked about the Mexican sunflower. This is gonna be such a fantastic biomass producer for the garden. Bed number two over here is in the same stage roughly as bed number one, and that needs to be turned over soon as well. All the warm season grasses are really popping off, and as you can see, some of the sorghum in the back has gotten real large. As for bed number three over here, this cover crop still has plenty of time left within it. I'm probably gonna let it go for another two months. We'll see how things progress. I seeded in plenty of flowering plants with this mix. The zinnias are looking absolutely fantastic and the cosmos are just about to start popping off. There are also some veggies in here. Got some cherry tomatoes right here. Some daikon type radishes down there. We've got some okra that's gonna start producing soon. And of course, sweet potatoes among other things. So yeah, everything's looking pretty great for the late summer. This this is typically when we have our hottest temperatures of the year, and I know what you're thinking. Mr. Solar Punk Farmer, why would you sow cool season veggies during the hottest part of the year? Well, there's only really one reason. I'll show you. I have imported what appears to be Bermuda grass, a very, very noxious weed, and I do not want this beginning to go to seed in my beds, so I have to terminate. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand why weeds are here. They exist to heal the soil and are an important part of the process of ecological succession. In fact, I don't mind weeds growing in my garden when they're vegging out. I just don't want them going to seed and overtaking my vegetables because I still want to be able to get a decent amount of production out of this garden. So all of this right here has to go. All right, let's get a move on. It's time to start cutting it down. Check it, we are all cleaned out. Unfortunately, removing a lot of the roots was unavoidable while I was weeding out that Bermuda grass. But as you can see, I did leave a lot of the root systems of the cover crops in the ground, which is what we want to do in order to maintain soil health. Minimize and or manage disturbance, folks. But just look at the soil, just look at it. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? This is living soil now. Let's go over to an untreated area right now and compare. So we've gone from this, absolutely rock hard, compacted, couldn't even get a shovel through it, to this beautiful, fluffy, living, well-structured soil with the help of free organic matter additions, compost, and cover crops. And funnily enough, most of the soil building work took under a year. Now that I'm more well-practiced at this, I feel like I could have done it in a single season. So here's the plan. We're gonna lay down some compost, some worm castings, some of that homemade sweet clover meal that I have, and then all of our residues right here as a mulch and a weed barrier. The compost, castings, and sweet clover meal are gonna be sprinkled pretty much all over the bed, whereas the mulch is going to be laid parallel to the drip lines, covering almost the entire bed, except for a narrow slit right next to the drip lines. That area is going to remain exposed, and that's where our seeds are going to be sown. All right, let's sift out some castings and some compost and begin remineralizing and mulching. All right, here are homemade fertilizers and inoculants for the bed. Over here we have worm castings, 
and these are just swarming with the red composting worms. I mean, let's go take a look. Look at that. Incredible. Lovely worm castings. I'm not sure why they're so sticky. Um, they do smell a bit of citrus. I have added some uh, lemons in there, uh, but only a couple, so I don't think that's really much of an issue. This should provide a pretty balanced NPK to the bed, plus a very broad spectrum of micronutrients. And over here we have the bioreactor compost. I mean, just look at that aggregation, look at that texture. It's so crumbly, so moist, and it's absolutely swarming with life. We've got worms, we've got beetles, we've got pill bugs, we've got millipedes, springtails, other invertebrates, and that tells me that we have a large diversity of bacteria and fungi and other microorganisms as well. So that material was sifted, this is what was left behind, and there's still quite a bit of material. I'm thinking of using this as a mulch for the fruit trees and the perennials. And also, interestingly enough, this mint that I had planted underneath the bin began growing up through the bottom. And normally one would think to themselves, wait, why would you let mint take over your compost bin? It's super invasive. It might spread everywhere. Well, a, I am sifting the compost, which is helping to get out any segments of runner that could root in my vegetable beds. B, it's very easy to sever all of the runners that have begun growing up into the bin by just literally rotating the bin back and forth and it just snaps them. And of course the mint roots are bringing obligate symbionts with them, which are organisms that require the presence of living plant roots in order to proliferate. These are some of our most important members of the soil food web. This group includes mycorrhizal fungi, which quite literally build the physical structure of living soil that you can see with your naked eye. Now mint of course is a mycorrhizal plant, so it's conceivable that the mint actually infected the compost with mycorrhizal spores. I have no way of proving this because I don't have a microscope currently, but logically at least this seems to be a possibility. Then of course of course, we have the sweet clover hay. Sweet clover is a fast-growing nitrogen-fixing herb that performs very well in my soil. It was included as a part of this year's warm season cover crop mix. It's an extremely efficient nitrogen fixer, so this ground-up sweet clover hay, what I'm calling sweet clover meal, should have a particularly high end value. So the cool season veggies should get a pretty decent shot of nitrogen from this stuff. And then of course we have all these residues which will be laid on top over almost the entire bed except right next to the drip lines. Okay, here we are, we are ready to plant. This is pretty much the best I could do at this point. But the objective here is really just to feed back the soil, to return all of those nutrients from the cover crops into the soil, and provide some protection for all the microbes and fungi and little invertebrates that live in the soil. So these slits right here are where the seeds are going to go. As you can see, they're right next to the drip lines. I tried to clear out that area as best as I could, but unfortunately, since the material I am using is so coarse, that proved to be a difficult task. As I'm sure you guys probably saw on the time lapse, I was struggling a little bit getting this material laid down and organized. What would have made this a lot easier is if I could have run all of this material through some kind of shredder and shredded it up really fine so that I could apply it really neatly and really precisely. Unfortunately, neither my wood chipper nor my leaf vacuum can shred any of this material because the stem diameter is too small on most of it and it is too wet. So in the future, I'm going to need to get a better tool to make sure I can process this to the right consistency to use as a mulch. Anyways, I have some time, so we're gonna get started with planting. I'm gonna do my best to get all the planting done today so that the soil is left fallow for as little time as possible. Keeping a living root in the soil at all times is super critical for soil health, and the ones from the cover crops are already starting to die back, so I need to get this bed sown as soon as I possibly can in order to maintain soil health. All right, let's go do it. Okay, everyone, so here's a quick overview of what we're gonna be planting. I just kind of take a look at the key right here. I don't really feel like I need to explain it, um, but the basic idea is I'm gonna space out the larger vegetable plants a bit more and then fill in the gaps with more medium and smaller sized vegetables. I'm especially going to be doing radishes next to a lot of the larger plants because those will be done within a month. I'll be able to pull them out. That way they don't get completely crowded out. Try to plant pretty densely here, but the idea is to get a lot of production out of this bed. Let's get to planting. <laughs>
will also be seeding in these Acme Spawn Americana seeds. As you guys can see right now, these are currently scarifying. I poured some boiling water on top of them. That should help to break the seed coat and encourage the seeds to imbibe water so that they can germinate. This is one of the native plants I showed in my previous video that is a candidate for cover crop mixes. What I'm actually gonna do is sow it as a scatter mix within my veggie beds so it comes up along with my veggies. Not only is this plant a nitrogen fixer, but it's quite a small and polite herb that shouldn't really compete with the veggies at all. Additionally, it performs just fine during the summer under irrigation. So I'm wondering if I could employ it as a sort of like permanent self-seeding cover crop. That way I'll be able to get continuous nitrogen fixation in my vegetable beds from a native plant without even really having to do anything or think about it. All right, folks, here we go. That is it. This bed is officially reset. I'm just gonna come through later and apply some compost extract and some diatomaceous earth to prevent all little critters from getting at the fresh young seedlings as they come up. <laughs> but yeah, all the seeds have been sown in between the rows. I didn't have any extra soil or compost on hand, so I just covered them up with a mixture of peat moss and vermiculite, which is what I normally use to start my aquaponic seeds. So I know it works pretty well. I did moisten it with aquaponic water and the extract will give the seedlings a little boost as they come up too. And hopefully give them the energy they need to establish themselves in my native soil. Okay, we're all set. I sowed in the Acumspawn Americanus and applied some compost extract. This bed is ready to go. It is on the drip irrigation and we can expect germination in a couple of days. But I just wanna talk a little bit about my hopes and concerns for this bed. Concern number one, reseeding. That sweet clover was pretty mature and I'm definitely a little bit worried that it might come up again in my bed. At that point, it'll be a weed and I'll need to weed it out. However, that's not that big of a deal. I'll just chop and drop it. Concern number two, Legginess. Now there is plenty of room for the seeds to germinate, but what I've seen happen in the past is that when they germinate through these slits, they might come up a bit leggy. I'm thinking that this could be because they're stretching for the light, but it may not happen. I guess we'll see. This kind of system is definitely something I'm experimenting with, so I can't expect things to turn out exactly how I want them. However, I can expect to learn a lot. Concern number three is the heat. We are set to be in the high 90s Fahrenheit again this weekend, and I'm definitely concerned that these young baby plants, which will probably be just emerging at this time, will get burnt to a crisp by the sun. I might roll out some shade cloth over the bed I'm kind of on the fence about shade cloth because that might encourage the seedlings to come out even more leggy. So again, we will see. And my fourth and final concern is damage from invertebrates such as slugs and small insects that love to munch on seedlings. This is easily corrected by diatomaceous earth, so this shouldn't be that much of a problem at all. This is an issue that I had when I was seeding in my warm season cover crops. Thankfully, they turned out fine, but I did have to reseed them two times because I lost too many of them to slugs, cutworms, and earwigs. I unfortunately made the mistake back then of not managing disturbance properly. I had just cut down all of the nitrogen fixing cover crops that were growing in the pathways. So all of those invertebrates immediately descended onto my vegetable beds looking for a snack. Hopefully letting my other cover crops stand a bit longer will provide those organisms with the habitat that they need so that they don't go for my veggie seedlings. And of course the diatomaceous earth will pretty much stop that from happening altogether. Anyways, really excited for these guys to come up. So I'll see you all later. Well, folks, it is day three since sowing and the radish seeds are already coming up. I am super stoked to have veggies again in the Resilience Garden. In addition, I've spotted a couple of the Acme Spawn Americanus germinating as well. It looks like birds got to a lot of them, but I have so many seeds and I only really need to get a couple of them up in order to get them to begin colonizing the vegetable beds. I expect to see more seedlings popping up in the next few days. Super stoked. I hope you enjoyed this Solar Punk Farmer vlog. And if you did, please make sure to like the video, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell icon so that you can receive notifications when I upload future content. And also be sure to check out my Instagram. It is right there, at Solar Punk Farmer, for more regular updates and solar punk content and memes. Anyways, my fellow Earthlings, see you all next time. <laughs>